escape. You guys suck. My parents are worth two million dollars. <laughs> Tell me you're a worthless, pathetic schmuck without saying you're a worthless, pathetic schmuck. Oh my God, there's so much to break down here, but uh, you know I gotta do it first. Sup, you beautiful bastards. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. Also, a quick friendly reminder before we jump into it. You now have only six days left if you wanna snag something from our amazing August drop that just went live. Boom, this, that, ka-chow, cause I'm also Lightning McQueen apparently. So yeah, grab what you're wanting, craving, needing while you can. Also, thank you for making this another record setting drop, but that said, uh, welcome to the video. Hit that like button if you want me to punch you in the throat and let's just jump into it. All right, so at the beginning of today's show, you got the honor of meeting Max Berry, who by the way, is our douchebag of the day. And right, it's not just because he was yelling at a plane of people saying, you suck, my mommy and daddy are worth more than $2 million. But rather because Berry allegedly groped the chest of two female flight attendants and then punched a male flight attendant in the face. But yeah, going back to the video because there's, there's more to break down here. Reportedly before the filming, he had had at least two drinks on the flight. Also the alleged groping happening before this video was filmed. And then in addition to talking about his mommy and daddy, he starts talking about his grandma. Grandpa, you even hear people like audibly laughing at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like my grandpa? <laughs> we then see Max escalate the situation. Hey, hey, hey. Nope. Max essentially fucking around and finding out he is not the man that he thinks that he is. He's easily dealt with, and then the Frontier crew duct tape him to his seat. And while you and seemingly a good number of people on that plane were brought joy to see him wrapped up like that, it brings us to the other aspect of this story. Well, yes, Maxwell Barry was arrested after they landed in Miami. Frontier suspended the crew for duct taping him to the seat. And my response to that is if this is anything other than like a poorly worded way to explain the situation, like this is not uh, a paid vacation for them, Fuck you, Frontier. And like, how dare you not have the back of your employees, especially in this past year? Flight attendants have had to deal with unprecedented harassment from customers this year. It's like nightmare story after nightmare story and you throw them under the bus like this? But that said, as far as what happens next from here, we're gonna have to wait and see both for the crew and Max Berry. But yeah, main thing, fuck you, entitled boy. Granted, your, your mommy and daddy's $2 million will probably help limit the punishment that you deserve here. But at the very least, what I can do here is highlight that Maxwell Berry is not only a douchebag, but he is our douchebag of the day. And like with every story on the Philip DeFranco show, I welcome you to let me know your thoughts in those comments down below regarding Max, Frontier, and anything else involved. And then next up, let's definitely talk about this big DMCA strike copyright situation with kind of a, a nice little sprinkling of drama on top. Although uh, that drama does provide very interesting insight into something else that we previously covered on this show years back. Right, so you have this very popular Twitch streamer by the name of XQC, who's become a massive topic of conversation ever since he was temporarily banned from the platform about a week ago, right? And reportedly he was banned for showing copyrighted snippets of the Tokyo Olympics on a live stream. And rather than just sitting by and taking that, he is reportedly contesting the DMCA strike that he received from the International Olympics Committee by filing a counterclaim to have it dismissed, which notably could potentially lead to a lawsuit from the IOC. And that is something that you often don't see, right? We even saw XQC's lawyer, Ryan Morrison, AKA video game attorney, confirming that clients are usually advised against countering. Because even if you're in the right, the legal process, it could be risky and very expensive. But here saying that they're confident that the content in question was fair use and that they hope that the IOC will quote, make the right decision and let this die. So with this, we've seen a lot of people talking online, including one of the most notable voices on this topic, YouTuber Ethan Klein. He, as you might remember, won a landmark fair use case against Matt Haas back in 2017. But, and I had no idea it got this bad. In a recent live stream, he said that Morrison was the first attorney to represent H3H3 in their suit, which I knew, but then added. He is a horrible attorney that royally screwed us. And um, the fact that he's handling this makes me very, very nervous. Ryan is out there saying, this is fair use, we're fighting it, and not, I'm not, ha I'm not a fucking media attorney and I'm not equipped to deal with this. Like I've held my tongue on this guy for so long, but now it's come to this point where I see him in a position to cause even more damage. And um, I really think that this is a dangerous place for everyone to be. 
when he's being represented by this guy who really doesn't know what he's doing. Beef in also explaining that once they replaced Morrison with a different team, the new attorneys were shocked at how poorly their case was handled and saying they even considered launching a malpractice case against him. But Ethan also isn't the only one raising concerns about Morrison. We've also seen the very popular and fellow Twitch streamer Pokemane giving her two cents, raising concerns about Morrison. But this more focused on Morrison being the co-founder and CEO of Evolved Talent Agency, which represents XQC and others. I believe that he is both, he acts as a lawyer and as an agent to streamers and content creators. And I feel like that is not a good position to be. I feel like it is even potentially a conflict of interest in some cases. Your lawyer should always be someone who's trying to like get as strict and as beneficial of a contract as possible. Whereas if you're also someone's agent, you just want the deal to go through because you get commission off of that. Again, my personal opinion, just my opinion. I don't think a person should be acting both as a lawyer and an agent. I think if you're a really good agent, you're just an agent. And if you're a really good lawyer, you're just a lawyer. Right, and with this, as far as what XQC had to say regarding Pokimane and Ethan, actually right before today's show, he was streaming regarding Pokimane's concerns after watching the clip of her, he responded. She seems very knowledgeable about this stuff. And to me, it feels like with what she's saying, that she passed the bar and she has a law degree. Um, this is an official statement. I'm, I'm probably just gonna fire my lawyer. I'm, I'm hiring Poki instead. She just knows better. Regarding Ethan's comments about Ryan Morrison, he said, Th things have changed because the thing guys listen, it's not, it's not one guy, it's, it's a whole entity, it's multiple entities, okay? Why am I even talking about you guys about this? Why, why, do I have, why, do I have, why do I have to disprove like random third parties? Also, as far as a comment from Ryan Morrison, we reached out this morning, have not heard from him yet. But yeah, that's ultimately where we are with this and we're gonna have to keep our eyes on it and kind of on two fronts. One, specifically regarding Ryan Morrison because there appears to be a lot of chatter and accusations there as well as just the IOC and XQC. My gut tells me the, the last people I wanna get in a legal battle with is the IOC or like the NFL. Yeah, this will either fizzle out or uh, blow up in someone's face, I don't know who. But that said, I would really love to know your thoughts on the, the whole story in general as well as anything with, with Pokemane, uh, Ethan, XQC and uh, the reactions thus far. It's gonna be an interesting one to watch. But from that, I wanna take a quick second to thank the fantastic sponsor of today's show, Raycon. Co-founded by audio engineers and some of the music industry's elite, Raycon is disrupting the electronics industry by designing premium wireless audio for half the price without compromise while prioritizing their customer experience from start to finish. And Raycon wireless earbuds are the best way to bring your favorite content with you wherever you go. I use mine all the time, whether I'm listening to podcasts or I'm on a Zoom call or, you know, just playlists for going on hikes, working out, riding my bike at the beach. Speaking of which, every time I do this, I always ask for new music and I have not been disappointed, so let me know some thoughts down below. Yeah, these Raycons, not only do they look amazing, they're comfortable, they sound great, and most importantly, they have a minimalist design, 32 hour battery life, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and they're extremely compact, making for a comfortable noise isolating fit. Right now, Raycon is offering 15% off just for you. So all you gotta do is click that link in the description down below or go to buyraycon.com slash Franco to get 15% off your order today. And don't forget, they have a 45 day free return policy. So what are you waiting for? And then let's talk about one of the most requested stories from this past week. And maybe you've seen the hashtag stop the shop. So let's talk about the campaign, what's behind it, what's happening. Right, so this story centers around the Judge Rottenberg Educational Center, which is a Massachusetts-based school that houses both adult and child students with severe intellectual disabilities or behavioral, emotional, and psychiatric issues. You know, this institution has been highly controversial among people with disabilities for the better part of the last half a century, but the most recent reason that it's been in the news is for the use of electric shock devices to modify students' behaviors. And with this, the center has said that the students' parents requested and consented to the devices, which are strapped to their legs or arms and remote controlled by staff and that they are only used for extreme behaviors like head banging, self biting or violently attacking others. And notably, some parents have been very vocal about their support for the use of these tools, which are exclusively used at this center, claiming that they are the best and last method to address these behaviors. But also previous students have complained of burns, accidental shocks and other abuses, with critics also having long said that these devices are inhumane and dehumanizing, with the UN going as far to describe them as torture. With many having also argued that the center has been administering the shocks excessively. With those people often pointing to an instance in 2002 when you had a student that was restrained and shocked more than 30 times for seven hours after he didn't take off his jacket when he was told to. Also reportedly five years later, there was another student who was shocked 77 times in just one night after a prank caller instructed staff to do so. Others saying that the devices are ineffective, that they can cause lasting damage, including the FDA, which took the incredibly rare step of banning the school from using them last March after a lengthy review found that they can cause long-term trauma and an unreasonable and substantial risk of illness 
illness or injury. With the FDA specifically noting that evidence of the device's effectiveness was weak and that there was no evidence of long-term behavioral changes in residents. And adding that any of the possible benefits here are outweighed by the risks of depression, anxiety, PTSD, pain, burns, and tissue damage. But it brings us to why we're talking about this now. The center petitioned the federal court to overrule the ban. And in fact, last month, the court decided in their favor, ruling that the FDA cannot legally ban the use of electric shock because federal law prevents the agency from intervening in the state regulated practice of medicine. And so with all of this, that's why we've seen a lot of people on Twitter bring back the hashtag stop the shock, which was earlier used by grassroots campaigns led by autism advocacy groups before the FDA banned the devices. Right, with many using it now, trying to raise awareness on this issue, others outlining action items, like this widely shared post that informs people how to file a complaint with the DOJ. And so far, it seems like this campaign might be getting heard. I say that in part because the House Appropriations Bill that passed just last week included a provision that would end federal funding for institutions that use the shock devices. Right, a move that directly targets the Judge Rottenberg Center because they are the only place that still uses it. But hurdle, speed bump, whatever you want to call it, that bill still has to be approved by the Senate. And given how much money the Senate has spent on lobbying Congress, you never know when someone's gonna come out of the woodworks and oppose this bill. So for now, we're gonna have to wait and see what happens here. But if this story stands out to you, you wanna get involved, of course, yes, you can use the hashtag on social media to spread the word, share this video, share better resources. Hell, I know most of you mainly text and you barely call your friends, but you can also call your senators and ask them to ensure the appropriations bill has the funding cut provision. And I'll also link to some action items down below, but with this, I do wanna pass the question off to you. What are your thoughts on all of this? And then let's definitely talk about Andrew Cuomo because after a nearly five month probe this morning, we had the New York State Attorney General announce. The independent investigation has concluded that Governor Andrew Cuomo sexually harassed multiple women and in doing so violated federal and state law. Specifically, the investigation found that Governor Andrew Cuomo sexually harassed current and former New York State employees by engaging in unwelcome and non-consensual touching and making numerous offensive comments of a suggestive and sexual nature that created a hostile work environment. Right, and as we talked about a while back, Letitia James launched that investigation into Cuomo after numerous women came forward to accuse him of unwanted touching and kissing and solicited advances, as well as fostering a hostile work environment. At that time, Cuomo denying the allegations, urging the public and his colleagues to wait until the investigation was complete. But now you do have the investigator saying that after interviewing 179 witnesses, collecting tens of thousands of documents, emails, texts, and photos, they were able to corroborate the claims of 11 women, including nine current or former state employees and two previously unreported allegations of unwanted touching. And very notably, the investigation also found that on at least one occasion, Cuomo and his senior staff retaliated against a former employee who made her allegations public. And so with all of that, I mean, you should very much expect a messy, shit show. But as you might remember, people including a number of Democrats were urging that he resign, with Cuomo urging those wanting that to wait until the results of the investigation were concluded. Right, and kind of along that line, we even saw back in March, President Biden saying that yes, Cuomo should step down and even be prosecuted if the investigation corroborated the women's claims. And now, following this morning, we've seen a wave of people calling for Cuomo to resign. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and Senator Kirsten Gillibrand issuing a joint statement this morning calling for Cuomo to resign. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio saying, it is beyond clear that Andrew Andrew Cuomo is not fit to hold office and can no longer serve as governor. He must resign and if he continues to resist and attack the investigators who did their jobs, he should be impeached immediately. Right, and this added pressure now coming because not only was this announcement made, but Cuomo has responded. Announcing this morning that he will not resign and saying that his attorney, who is a non-political former federal prosecutor, has done a response to each allegation and the facts are much different than what has been portrayed. That document is available on my website. If you are interested, please take the time to read the facts and decide for yourself. With Cuomo then going on to say, I want you to know directly from me that I never touched anyone inappropriately or made inappropriate sexual advances. And regarding the touching, he brought up the New York Times. The New York Times published a front page picture of me touching a woman's face at a wedding and then kissing her on the cheek. That is not front page news. I've been making the same gesture in public all my life. I actually learned it from my mother and from my father. It is meant to convey warmth 
Nothing more. Cuomo then going on to continue speaking while at the same time showing a, a slideshow of him touching a lot of people. Indeed, there are hundreds, if not thousands of photos of me using the exact same gesture. I do it with everyone, black and white, young and old, straight and LGBTQ, powerful people, friends, strangers. Though it did appear that Cuomo addressed and did make at least one concession, and that being the specific allegation from his former aide, Charlotte Bennett, admitting that he did ask her questions I don't normally ask people, including about her dating life, but saying that he was truly and deeply sorry for bringing his personal wife into the workplace, but claimed that she ascribed motives that he never had and heard things I just didn't say. But ultimately, that is where we are right now. It is still a developing situation. There are a lot of reactions and statements that you should expect to come in the next 24 hours. I mean, hell, as I was finishing up today's show, we had President Biden saying, yes, I do believe that Cuomo should resign, as well as you know, there's a lot of talk now about articles of impeachment regarding Cuomo. And that specifically is gonna be something that we need to keep our eyes on because even before this report came out, the New York State Assembly launched an investigation into whether there were grounds to impeach Cuomo stemming from a number of scandals centering around abuse of power. Right? This, including in addition to the sexual harassment claims, whether he used state funds to promote his book, his administration's alleged efforts to conceal COVID nursing home deaths, and if he gave people special access to COVID testing. So yeah, like I said, prepare, for the messy shit show. And in the meantime, I would really love to know your thoughts regarding this story. Do you believe Cuomo? Yes, no, somewhere in the middle. Do you think that he should resign? Yes, no, somewhere in the middle. And if he doesn't resign, do you think that he should be impeached? Yes, no, anything and everything. And the final thing that we're gonna talk about today is we have another international spotlight on the bastion of freedom that is Belarus. Right, so the first situation, I think more people have heard about this. You have that Belarusian track star who managed to secure asylum in Poland this after she was nearly forced onto a flight home from the Tokyo Olympics. They're being removed from the competition for allegedly criticizing her coaches, although her coaches told state media that she was removed because of her emotional, psychological state. With the country's athletics head coach adding that he could see that there was something wrong with her. She either secluded herself or didn't want to talk, which may or may not have to do with living in totalitarian Belarus, worried about being jailed or killed. But you know, ultimately what we with this is Poland granted her visa request with a foreign ministry official tweeting that she was offered a humanitarian visa and is free to pursue her sporting career in Poland if she so chooses. With the IOC now investigating the situation around this 24 year old runner and why she was almost forced home and whether or not it'll take action against Belarus. Also good news reportedly the runner's husband is already out of Belarus has entered Ukraine with the runner also saying to the media, I am afraid that I might be jailed in Belarus. I'm not afraid of being fired or kicked out of the national team. I'm concerned about my safety. And you know with the regime in power there, it makes sense. I mean, hell, uh, for example, the other spotlight that's on Belarus today in the news, you had Vitaly Shishov, right? An activist from Belarus who was living out political exile in Ukraine. He'd been missing for a day, but as of this morning, he was found hanged in a park not far from his home in Kyiv. Authorities there launching an investigation into his death. Right now, it's leaning towards it being a homicide. And there are a few notable things here. Uh, Shishov reportedly told friends recently that he felt like he was being followed on his morning runs. Also, he ran the Belarusian House in Ukraine, an NGO that helped Belarusians fleeing persecution in the country to find jobs, housing, and legal advice after making their way out. With similar groups existing across Poland, Ukraine, and the Baltic nations, all of which have become political havens for Belarusians trying to escape. And so obviously, with a death like this, there are thoughts that he was targeted by Belarusian state agents, especially as the government of Alexander Lukashenko is ramping up the pressure on NGOs within the country, conducting nearly 200 raids in July alone against groups, journalists, and independent media outlets. And now with this possibly abroad as well, and that theory seems to be prevalent among members of the Belarusian house in Ukraine, with one telling Al Jazeera that this death was meant as a signal and a message to other exiles to sit low and keep their mouths shut. But ultimately with this story or honestly anything else that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in those comments down below because yes, this is a news show, but it is also a conversation. But yeah, as always, thanks for watching, like, and subscribe and all the good stuff. Also remember you only have six days left over at beautifulbastard.com. Grab what you want while you can, but my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow.